With the collapse of the Frick Park Wilkinsburg Bridge, the city of Pittsburgh and its whole community have finally served up a metaphor for everything about themselves. Their norm, they call it a provincial norm. Well, now we have the perfect seal of provincial norm approval for all time. They vowed that the children are safe. Never mind that a school bus could have crossed that bridge at the moment that it collapsed. There are so many imperatives in Pittsburgh provincial code that sum up to the collapse of their bridge that I call it the bridge of Pittsburgh consciousness. They would say, if you feel that the bridge collapsed, it's because you brought it upon yourself to learn from it. So those of you who feel that the bridge collapsed should be warned that it was your karma that you're in the people who say it was your karma are the people who you've defended while you allowed that bridge to reach the point where it collapsed so you it's called passing the buck and taking responsibility for yourselves so don't pass the buck to the people who say it was your karma because they're the administration and the authorities. So we know it was your karma, that you brought it upon yourself in order to learn from it. What you feel is the collapse of the bridge serves as a metaphor for Pittsburgh consciousness, for all there is to know about the moral code and the provincial norm of the city of Pittsburgh. We could branch out to the far side of the where the bridge is usually photographed from, which is the city of Wilkinsburg, to Celeron Street, where John Shulman, the notorious museum thief and partner of Robert Fripp with King Crimson, lived when they made the Celeron carrot tape with the help of Jaime Carbonell, which conformed to uh, the regular nuances of Pittsburgh Provincial Moral Code. It showed that a child had been held hostage and brutally tortured by a gang of violent adult armed pedophiles. And Pittsburgh said that it was the child's fault that this happened. Not far from there is Kelly Elementary School where the same gang raced a cargo bus, cargo van around a boarding school bus, heedless of the children. But according to Pittsburgh Moral Code, because I was the passenger protesting who quit the job over the event, and I'm white, it was my fault. Not because I protested, not because I quit the job over the incident. That's to be expected, but because for other reasons, they didn't want the white to be seen as a protesting passenger who quit the job over the incident. So by doing the right thing, I automatically became uh, the perpetrator of the wrong thing. The wrong thing was being white protesting and quitting the job over the incident. The right thing was quitting the job over the incident. I'm not the one who said I was white. I was furious. It could have killed somebody. Those were children. It was a predominantly black elementary school. The parents who saw me didn't blame me. It was the bigots of the black establishment who blamed me because they had an ax to grind. They had made the cellar on carrot tape. They were working with Shulman on secret spy camp pornography films. They had set up a two virgins pussy ball fight club clock to the AIDS attack. One of them, Duvall from CCAC, said, I know Bush started AIDS, and I support him for it. Those people wanted me pigeonholed, so they pigeonholed me. That was their word from WQED. Matt Marcus 
worked with Dr. Proctor with WQED, and he was the one who labeled me pigeonholed. What else did Matt Marcus do? Well, one day I found Noel and Page looking for him. And one of their arms were all bandaged up, and I said, what happened? And they said, Matt told us to burn ourselves in the sink zone. I said, how badly were you burned? Well, Noel got gangrene. I said, what? I went to Matt and said, what the hell do you do this for? He said, to bring them back to reality, man. Now, Matt Marcus was the perpetrator of all the vile hatred that was directed at me. Because when Leslie Cott broke up with me, she introduced me to him and gave me a note that said, hide here under my cloak. It was cloak and dagger. She was in Jabber walking with John Shulman. I never did anything to her. She dated me for two years, and as intimate as we were, she left still a virgin to go to college. I never contested that. I had ample opportunities to try to force myself on. I never did. What would they be saying about me that was irregular? Well, when I got on the elevator, they said, had it painted, beat me, beat me, make me write bad checks. Well, I, they knew I had an implanted neuroplasm, and they knew I didn't know. So I was sort of easily agitated, and I left some letters like, why are you so hateful to me? And Matt Marcus said, because you're fucked up. Stop taking your fucked upness out on us. I'm fucked up. They burned Noel and Page's arms gangrenous. They sided with the gang who rode recklessly at school, at Kelly's school, on the other side of that picture, where they could have killed black children because that gang set me up as a white stumble bum in their two versions pussy ball operation, which starred Nadori Goto, on whom Obama's crowd called dibs. And they made it into the super state by slipping each other this these letters that had some oblique reference to the murder of John Lennon, which never even seems to have really happened. You say, well, that's a big lie. It really happened, but it had nothing to do with you. See, they secret all this stuff. The union in Pittsburgh has it going with Yoko Ono. They were the ones who were making the movies. They're the ones who poisoned me in the mouth before they released COVID, they set up the two versions pussy bowl war game on Mount Desert on them, and the AIDS testing war game. And they've been saying, you know, if you don't shut up, well, you, you'll have to die of AIDS. That's the mandate. When they kidnapped and tortured me, they gassed me in a place called Kings Estate, and these people called Pitmen, which is like the Quarrymen, the original name for the Beatles, said you have to sniff but this other guy doesn't have to because he bled from the nose. His brother bled from the nose. So in other words, if you don't let us poison you in the mouth, you have to die by HIV. It's the game that they're playing. And here in Seattle, it's true. That's what they're doing. They call it the clubhouse movement. It's the Green Party. They ripper murdered somebody and said it was over a penny. You know, they want the swastika sea copyright on the Licky Chops porno. So they didn't care about the children. They didn't make any attempt to find out who the real driver was. You know, and they said it was a race call. What's a race call? You're supporting the racists who raced recklessly at Kelly School killed and killed these black children because you want to include your carrot tape in your story of Jimmy Crewley in the provincial norm where a, a white boy gets Brutally tortured by the Ku Klux Klan and the NAACP laughs. So that's the truth of the situation. Now, when you look at the business about John Lennon not really dying, the girl who's on the cover of Robert Fripp's God Save the Queen, under Heavy Manners Records, the spinning image of Gail Burston, who wrote the script. How does that work? Okay, so. She's also splitting image in a 50s film of Anne Rand holding her, clapping her hands over her ears, looking Asiatic, and it says it will be just like starting over. That was the name of the song he used with Yoko Ono, what gives? 
they put out these beetle people, the quarrymen, the pitmen, put out the White Album, which supposedly is a symbol of mourning white, on the anniversary, fifth anniversary, November 22nd, 1968, of JK's removal by their gang. I mean, you could see that very clearly on the cover of Sgt. Pepper's, the memorial images that are identical to the crowd images on the cover of Life for Jackie Kennedy stands with Little John after the funeral. It's that mosaic type style stylistically of all these dead celebrities, right? They blew his mind out in a car, right? They blow his mind out. And nobody remembers anymore who he is, right? Do you remember President Nixon? You know, who, 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 was he from the House of Lords, this person? And then being from the bad friend of Mr. Kite has this carousel, don't, 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 don't. Well, carousel club was where Jack Ruby was. Benefit of Mr. K. And lastly, through a hogshead of real fire. So we know that they were in on it. Now, that's simple. And the so-called album of mourning has some um, uh, uh, zaps and right between the eyes. All the children saying, that's mourning. Had they, had, you know, and they, they want to continue the story. The, uh, historically, black colleges and universities see the mandate as a uniform storytelling alliance. Well, that's the public right to know. Goes that's Pittsburgh consciousness. You know, it collapses with that bridge. You know, that's so much for the public's right to know. We have a story. The collapse bridge is better story. You you just take it from me, right? Because see how I exploit that tale. Oh yes, it's my fault that that happened. I'm exploiting the tale. I'm exploiting their tragedy. It seems so. They have Diamond de Gaulle's who. Namesake Die of Dermon. It's crowd in the temple calls me on December 8th, 1980, right? And she's she's holding the switchblade outside the two towers, right? She was in anthrax, I mean, not anthrax, Satanism studies and immunogenic studies. And anthrax is a symbol of the biological warfare things that she's into because she, they were in the AIDS attack, right? They call me December 8th night. She's a friend of Crocker Regronog and um, Kim Kardashian. So, you know, you know, you have this Diagolus crowd who sets up COVID and poisons me in the mouth. And they all have this international telltale story that they're telling. The storytelling alliance while they get rid of people with COVID, you know, sprinkle them some with the pepper virus from Pepperland virus, you know, and everybody gets a, you know, even Donald Trump gets a, he gets some of the pepper virus and now we're all safely removed for the syndicate that they have in mind, you know, and it's ghastly gyration. It's his Pittsburgh. The, the bridge collapses, right? I, I'm, not, I'm not amused by it. I'm amused by it, the way that it plays into the argument because I hate that that bridge collapsed. Last time I was on that bridge and whereabouts, you know, one of, one of my strongest memories of that bridge was Marty Rikers from CMU. Rikers, got it like Rikers Island. They're playing, but they don't have people from New York there watching and manipulating the situation. They're playing that CMU didn't set up, Ming Na Wen particularly who went to school with the guy who owned that van that wrote the Jackson Lee Kelly School, wasn't pulling strings with all this stuff when she was. She was very clearly working with George Takai on this manipulation system out of P, uh, WQED, where Fred Rogers was and stuff. Oh, he's innocent, the holy innocent Fred Rogers, you know, who's set designer burns these girls' arms gangrenous. Okay. Marty Rikers is down there. That's one of my most recent memories of that place. You know, one of my most, um, I used to cross it all the time. Obviously, I'm not happy it collapsed. But it did collapse, and that says a great deal about them. You know, and so you have this situation of uh, context that makes it um, frightening. Yeah, that was where I came walking up from when I was, pre-seizure when I made the decision I have to go to Iowa where I was screaming and vomiting and having terrible seizures and blow back to being kidnapped and tortured by the pit nut. but I got run out of that town by Shulman of Celeron down where that bridge collapsed and um, 
uh, the woman who was working with WQED, Amanda Harcourt, for Yokohono's attorney, the one who was justifying injecting people, they wrote this letter praising Joseph Goebbels and said that he was defending the black men. Joseph Goebbels, what's well, yes, that's what they said. The Pittsburgh NAACP said the man who set up the Butchie Ball Tour and Fight Club to benefit the black man. And now my point was, how do they justify this weird thing out in Seattle, right? It doesn't make any sense. Well, it turns out that prostituting a battered, deaf little boy who's, who's white, I mean, you can't escape that. That's a prison you know, is akin to, if you if you wanted to say that was bad under Pittsburgh Provincial Code law, the municipal code would say, if you want to go to court, well, uh, we have sociologists from University Dialectical who would tell you a very loud, sad story about the red light district in India. Oh, the red light district in India is the responsibility of the muni establishment in the city of wilkinsburg therefore if you feel that bridge collapsed it is because you brought it upon yourself in order to learn from it you see and that's why the naacp supports the gang who almost killed black school children because support of that gang is the black man promoting being promoted by Joseph Goebbels. And you know that Joseph Goebbels isn't on the side of the black man. And this is the mentality. That's why I call it the bridge of Pittsburgh consciousness. You can trace that. Sally Uden, you can connect the dots to, to um, uh, Pitt football getting involved in uh, Corona poisoning me in the mouth and, and chemically castrating me because they were jealous of my girlfriend, right? You know, everybody's, oh, oh no, he, she's too pretty for him. And that, and he insulted Pittsburgh. Oh, that's, that's the mo- thing you must never forget. When they stole my stamp collection, it was because he insulted, he was spreading rumors about John Shulman, is what they said. The fact is that he showed me money receipt for money was given to him by the post office of a rare book and I didn't believe him. I asked some questions and they said, you're you're starting rumors about him. Turned out he was ripping off the museum for eight million dollars. Did the FBI care? No, because he was saying Reagan didn't know. Querball was saying Reagan problem we didn't know, but something's going on here. Meg no when comes down swooping down with the Shulman gang and says he's framing Reagan. So the FBI says, oh, well, we support Meg no one. Queer bait is framing Reagan. The man who tortured me when named Ronnie and Casper, just like Reagan and Weinberg. I was just asking, what's going on here with this name syndicate? And they had the Federal Emergency Management Agency, you know, playing this, that, and the other with the state police looking, oh, oh my God, Re- revelation number nine has come to us. You know, and what's going on? Well, if you feel that the bridge of Pittsburgh consciousness collapses because you brought it upon yourself in order to learn from it, you see, because Goebbels was defending the black man when he raced the school bus that could have killed the black children. Remember that. So you put on your thinking caps and never question WQED because WQED is the sublime Swami Nostra of UW Dialectical here in Seattle, too. You get that through your head. 